I have already introduced the term impedance when we spoke about resistors, inductors, and capacitors. Now, impedance is a complex number with the real part being the resistance, R, and the imaginary part being the reactance, typically abbreviated as an X. To indicate the difference between a resistor, which is typically drawn as a rectangular with the European signals, an impedance has a wave looking like a sine wave inside that rectangular. The letter to be represented is set and has an underscore indicating that it is a complex number. The reactance is a field rectangular and carrying the letter X. As with all complex numbers, their real and imaginary part can be rewritten as an amplitude and a face. The face is often also called the argument. The reverse proportional of an impedance is an admittance. Both of them are complex numbers. The real part of an admittance is called a conductance, and the imaginary part of the admittance is called the susceptance. And again, as it's a complex number, it can be rewritten as an amplitude and a phase. Summing up all the components we have looked at so far, the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor with the signals, so the currents through them and the voltages across them being time dependent. We can use the phase of the representation of Ohm's law as indicated in this column of the table. In terms of our resistance, R is the proportional factor between voltage and current. In terms of inductance, we multiply with the factor J omega, indicating that the time derivative is proportional to the voltage across an inductor. In terms of the capacitors, we need to integrate the current passing through them along the time axis to get the voltage across them. The impedances of those three components are shown in this column. The impedance of a resistor only consists of a real part, the resistance itself, whereas the impedance of an inductor only has an imaginary part, which is omega L, where omega L is equivalent to the reactance XL of the impedance ZL. Note that Z is a complex number with the underscore, and XL is the imaginary part only, so XL by itself is a real part only. The impedance of a capacitor is 1 over J omega C, and the reactance of that capacitor XC is minus 1 over omega C, and the minus is coming from that we actually lift the J up from the denominator to the numerator as J can be rewritten as J squared divided by J, which is equivalent to minus one over J. Finally, the last column of the table is showing the admittance of all these components. The admittance of a single resistor is equal to one over the resistance of that resistor, which equals the conductance. For an inductor, the admittance is one over J omega L, which is equals to J times the susceptance of the admittance, which is the imaginary part of the admittance. And applying the same math as we just did with the factor of J, over here, we can rewrite BL to be equivalent to minus 1 over omega L and leave the J in front of BL. The admittance of a capacitor is J times omega C, 
where omega c is the imaginary part of the omnipotence, which means it is the susceptance. To round off the introduction of inductors and capacitor, there is an exercise for an inductor here and an exercise for a capacitor on the next slide. In this one, the voltage across an inductor is given and the size of the inductance is 100 millihenry. What is the complex impedance of that inductor? What are the voltage and coloring phasors? And how does the phasor diagram look like? Which analytical function describes the current? And how does the voltage and the current look like in the time domain? Finally, what is the phase relationship between the current through that inductor and the voltage across it? And in the next exercise, the voltage waveform is exactly the same. The questions are the exact same, but this time the voltage is applied across a 10 microfarad capacitor. 